So today we're going to have a look at the Kershaw Shuffle, a little knife that was sent to me in a very generous gift package by 40 Belowful, John in Alaska. This is the knife. Now the knife does have a bottle opener but I'm not going to use it to open today's beer and I shall explain why when we take a closer look. What I will do is use this Alaskan Brewing Company opener, also a gift from John. And today's beer is Unicorn Black. Rich Roasted Stout. 4.1% and this is made by Robinsons. Now, historically I've never been particularly impressed with Robinsons. The old Tom, the strong dark ale they've done for a long long time, is lovely. But their ordinary bitter, frankly, is swill. So we're going to see how we get on with this. Very dark. Coffee coloured head. May have rushed the pour there, but I think we might just about be alright. And we're in. Now, does it tell us anything? A modern twist on an aged old recipe. Sure that should be ages old or age old. Unicorn Black is a dark mysterious ebony coloured stout with a distinct aroma of roasted malt and chocolate. So let's see 4.1% a bit on the light side for a stout I would have thought. Smells a little bit chocolatey. Very smooth. Very smooth feel in the mouth. It's creamy. Quite bitter. And the chocolate seems to come through on the finish. It's not the biggest flavour in the world, but it's nice. It's um, definitely a, a creamy, chocolatey stout, bitter edge. Quite impressed. Mm. So, Unicorn Black from Robinson's. That really is quite nice considering they can't brew a pint of bitter to save their lives. So, before we get on to having a close look at the shuffle, there may or may not be another section of this video. I'm actually filming this um, last Sunday afternoon, which would have been 24th, something like that. And the day before, I ordered a couple of items, both of which I think some of you might like to see. So I'm sort of hoping that by the time it comes for uploading this video, one or the other of them will have arrived and I can insert a section just about here. So this is my current uh, jacket from George at Asda. Not very expensive, but well made and quite comfortable. But it is definitely only a summer jacket. Uh, it's not wind, it's not waterproof, and it's not windproof. So I've decided, as we're getting towards um, the autumn, that I need an upgrade. And this is it. 
uh, Milton ECWCS with a zip out fleece liner definitely waterproof definitely windproof well allegedly definitely the sizing is a bit generous but I don't mind that because I've always had a looser coat I find it more comfortable so this winter hopefully I won't be freezing real bollocks off so you may or may not have just seen one of my new purchases either way it's time for the main business of the video which is to have a look at the knife sent to me by 40 below full all the way from Alaska the Kershaw shuffle okay so this is how the knife came to me um, no box but that's not a problem if I find a picture online that I can steal showing you the kind of box that would this would have come in I'll add it on at the end so first thing I think really why did I not open my beer given that it's got a bottle opener well there is a screw missing just there now this back piece that forms the bottle opener goes right round and forms the big lanyard hole Secured with two screws there, but the one missing from the end. Now I did give it a bit of a push with my thumb and there was some slight movement. So I didn't want to put too much strain on it, because it'd just be these two screws here taking all the force, with this outlying screw missing. And I didn't want to shear those off, because at the moment it's a perfectly usable knife. And if I shear those screws off and the back piece comes away, um, it's not going to be much use for anything. So I didn't want to risk that. So what have we got? This is a kind of knife that I call a working knife, a toolbox knife. Um, it doesn't make any pretensions to being elegant and stylish in, in the traditional sense, but it's a good modern design. Single blade, uh, FRN handles, and I do like the grippy texture which is from repetitions of the letter K for Kershaw moulded into the scale. Same on both sides. The um, backspacer has this knurling at the top, jimping if you will. Just stands slightly proud of the back. Large lanyard hole there. Easily get two thicknesses of paracord through that I would think. And we've got the quite a deep carry pocket clip. If the lanyard hole wasn't there and the backspacer ended flush with the scales that would be complete 100% deep pocket clip. Quite strong by the feel of it. So thumb studs on both sides, liner lock clicks into place nicely. Let's check the focus again. So this is the, as you can see, the all black version, Kershaw there on the blade in white and on the other side, I'm going to assume that's the model, 8700 in black, Kai being the company that owns the Kershaw brand. Nice swooping curve, one thing I do like in knives, uh, particularly in fixed blades, but it works just as well on a folder like this, is where the curve of the handle runs continuously into the curve of the back of the blade and it makes a nice shape. I think that's very attractive. The blade is 8CR13 MOV, so not an expensive steel, but perfectly serviceable. I think this knife can be had for about 21 or 22 pounds in the UK. Let's have a look at the specs. So the blade length tip to scale is two and a quarter inches, about 56, 57 millimeters. Straight line across the cutting edge gives us just two inches, 50 mil. 
handle of three and a half inches, 90 mil. So the overall is getting on for six inches, five and three quarters, about 145 millimeters. The liner lock is nice and solid. There's no blade play side to side or up and down. Quite a thin liner piece. It's a three mil blade. And I would say the liner is probably half that, but it's good positive lock. We've got nylon washers either side, so it is smooth. And there you can see, let's just check the focus again. That's so what's coming up to the camera. There you can see the socket and the track from the detent ball. Let's do a size comparison. The usual size comparison I do is the Victorinox Spartan. As you can see it's about the same length but it is a much chunkier knife. It doesn't feel very heavy though. Um, I'm not convinced we've got metal liners other than the plate. Oh maybe we have on that side. We might have one sunken metal liner. Oh no, two sunken metal liners, I do beg your pardon. I was wondering if it was just the plastic handle, but I was wrong. So, in grams, that's 79.2 grams. In English, 2 and 3 quarter ounces. And if you bear in mind that the Spartan weighs a shade over two, so it's a bit heavier than the Spartan, but there's more steel in the blade, certainly. Let's have a go at the cutting edge. I don't know if this is the factory edge or not. Um, I don't think this is a new knife, so it's probably done a bit of work already. But we'll just see where we're at at the moment. That's all right, actually. Won't take, won't take a lot of work to get that sharp, I don't think. Well, actually, maybe it is a little bit duller than I thought. So, we'll do some work on that when I get a chance. The thing we need to talk about is ergonomics. Because when I first saw this knife on sale, I was worried about the bottle opener digging in your hand. So when you get the knife, you've got a forward choil there, which is very comfortable. Three big finger grooves and just enough room for your pinky to rest. So that feels nice. The way my hand bends round, let's see if we can show that. There isn't really any contact with the spike there. If you hold it by the finger grooves because it does push it quite far forward in your hand and you've got a natural well forming when you curl around it so that is actually perfectly comfortable there's no no problem with that at all and I'm quite surprised because that's what I was concerned about when I first saw this design so overall I think this is a very practical and um, very affordable well made little pocket knife. Um, I think I could recommend this as a purchase, you know. Very nice. The only thing to bear in mind um, over here in the UK is because it's a locking blade, it's not legal out in public. But other than that, that's a lovely little knife. And a very generous gift from 40 Below Full. John in Alaska. So, as I say, if I can find a picture of the box, I'll drop one in just before the slideshow, but have a look at the close-ups and see what you think. <laughs>